Hello, in this video we're going to be studying the fundamental ideas behind thermal physics. We're talking about temperature, heat, and internal energy, uh, all ideas that will help us to eventually understand how thermal energy is transferred to and from objects. All right, here we go. The big idea for most of this unit, especially for this uh, intro part here, is there's two ways we can talk about things. If we talk about the glass of water, we will look at a lot. Um, that's a macroscopic object, and we can talk about macroscopic properties like bigger picture uh, properties as compared to microscopic. Things like temperature are properties of a whole substance, and we're going to look at those and describe them in terms of microscopic behavior. So we're going to talk about things like temperature, which is macroscopic, understanding that in terms of what the individual little like water molecules are doing in terms of their kinetic energy. So we're going to be looking at big picture properties that we measure, things like temperature and phase, in terms of uh, imagining little small objects, molecules, and atoms, and how they vibrate or move around. So there's a little bit of uh, imagination that goes with this unit as we try and picture the very, very, very small scale behavior of individual atoms and molecules, and that's what we're going to look at. That being said, the first macroscopic property we can look at is temperature. And temperature, all it is, is it's a measure of how quickly the objects that make up a material are vibrating. It turns out every single molecule or atom, if it's above like absolute zero, which is everything, it's vibrating. It's jiggling. There's jiggling happening. Here is some complicated molecule. Lots of uh, different pieces together there. But the idea is if you zoomed in on one of these at the very, very, very small scale, it really looks like this. Everything is kind of jiggling around uh, and vibrating randomly. And that is what causes temperature. It turns out the more quickly and aggressively this thing is jiggling, the hotter the overall material will be temperature-wise. It is a macroscopic property. So you can talk about hot water versus cold water which tells you on average how all the little H2Os are vibrating around and how quickly they're vibrating. But an individual water molecule, an individual H2O has no temperature. So this is what we mean by a macroscopic property. I can look at a glass of water and talk about the temperature of all of that water combined, but I can talk about temperature for an individual particle. It has no meaning. Here's another little animation to give you an idea. Uh, how thermometers work is based on this idea of vibration. Hot air vibrates, the air molecules are vibrating, bouncing around more than cold air or any substance. And so you'll see that by the vibrations causing the mercury to rise. All right, and temperature, you wanna be careful. Temperature is not a unit of energy. Temperature is not measured in joules. Temperature's got its own thing like Kelvin or Celsius or Fahrenheit. Um, and we'll go over those in more detail. There is an equation in uh, part two of topic three. We are going to formally go over this equation later. So I would not even worry about necessarily writing it down yet. But just to show you, this comes up later. And it shows us that um, the average kinetic energy, this bar, is the math symbol for mean, if you recognize that from math class, for the average. So the average kinetic energy is calculated based on temperature. So the two of those are like proportional, they're related to each other, but there's some other constants and stuff out in front. So the units are not the same. Uh, Fahrenheit, Celsius, Kelvin, those are not like, you can't convert them from joules, they're different things. So temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy. All right, so you want to think of temperature as basically a more or less a measure of how quick things are jiggling in a substance. That's really what it is. And the other big avenue we look at here, the other big property, is the phase or the state of matter. Of course, you know from forever that there are three main states of matter that we are interested in, solids, liquids, and gases. This is a picture from Cognity that I think is really good. Uh, Cognity has a lot of good animations and stuff. Um, here's one where we can look at a 
a glass of seltzer water maybe there's uh some some liquid solid and gas all in here so we can look at them combined so we have ice cubes here that would be a solid um, everything's in like a kind of fixed lattice the molecules just vibrate that's the any temperature is just vibration of these things back and forth they kind of buzz around in their lattice the liquid um has a little bit different going on bond wise and these can kind of they vibrate and they can also move around each other whereas in a solid they can't they're fixed in place and gases we can imagine as little ping pong balls bouncing around they don't care about each other at all uh, and so they just move in random directions there's very little vibration they're just moving and again uh, there's a lot of difference in terms of how they're connected to each other so it turns out what we really care about energy wise and physics wise is there are different forces holding these molecules say together in different states so in a solid you have very strong bonds holding these things in a rigid lattice in a liquid the inner molecular forces are less so they're not so tightly bound to each other they still are attracted to each other though um, and so they kind of like tumble around each other and they can move around each other they're not locked in place and then in a gas they're almost completely nothing um, and so these things can really just fly around randomly and the way we're going to talk about that we're going to we're going to be interested in the potential energy of these molecules and so just like if i have two masses that are close together and gravitationally attracted and i pull them apart i am decreasing the force between them which means i'm increasing the potential energy as these things get further apart same idea here as i go from a solid to a liquid to a gas potential energy is increasing and that's the big idea and that's the big thing we're going to care about as we start looking at the physics of this energy that's happening as i change state or change phase we're increasing potential energy going this way or decreasing going the other so just kind of generally you can think of it as further apart means high potential energy closer together means lower potential energy just like with gravitation all right, all that together gives us our first real definition, which is internal energy. And this is a combination of all of these things. So there's really two types. There is intermolecular potential energy and random kinetic energy. It's both of those things together. That's the definition of internal energy that the IB will almost certainly ask you about. So you want to kind of break it into two like bins in your head. The one being intermolecular potential energy has to do with phase. So potential has to do with phase. Again, as we break these chemical bonds, and that's not the greatest word for it, but they get weaker as we just change from solid to liquid to gas. Uh, the potential energy of the molecules will increase. And molecules have random kinetic energy due to their temperature. So we have potential energy that's associated with the phase of the substance, and we have random kinetic energy that's associated with the temperature of the substance. So again, looking at the glass of water, if you just look at it, and based on all the mechanics that we've done so far, you would look at this thing and say, it's not really moving, so it doesn't have kinetic energy. It's sitting on the table, so we would probably say there's zero gravitational potential energy, there's no spring or anything. So it kind of appears to have no energy, and in a mechanics kind of sense, we could say there's no real mechanical energy. But it does have internal energy because the molecules of the substance have all kinds of energy going on. It's actually very exciting what's happening inside of a, a glass of water as the little H2 walls all tumble around each other and are moving, and there's attractive forces between them. So there is kinetic and potential energy in a thermal energy sense, and we call that internal energy. So internal energy is the, those two together. One last term is heat. And heat is a different thing. So one thing you'll have to do is keep straight in your head the difference because it's easy to be kind of sloppy with these and use them interchangeably because a lot of times in everyday life, we tend to use these things sort of interchangeably. Heat is a term that means thermal energy. It's an amount of energy. That's the biggest thing you want to remember about heat. Heat you measure in joules. So it's the amount of energy. It's not the same as temperature. Remember, temperature is not measured in joules at all. 
And it's not even really the same as internal energy because heat is going to be an energy that gets transferred. So heat is very much like work. Uh, it is a type of work, really, because it's an amount of energy that can transfer from one thing to another. And what we're going to look at, the last thing we'll look at here, is that it transfers when there's a difference in temperature. So if you put an ice cube in your hand, you will feel it, and what you're feeling is heat leaving your hand and going into the ice cube. So heat is the amount of energy that transfers from one thing to another. All right, like it or not, here's the variable we use for heat. We use capital Q. Capital Q is a variable we're going to use to represent thermal energy or heat, the amount of energy that gets transferred from one thing to another. All right, so here's how it happens. Let's say I have a warm object in contact with the cool object. When there's a difference in temperature, that's when heat will flow. So heat will flow from warm to cool. We will, in a later unit, look at kind of in detail the uh, mechanisms, say, that this happens through, how, it, how heat transfers from warm to cool. More or less, uh, in this case, things bump against each other. The molecules here are vibrating fast. The molecules here are vibrating not so fast. And so there's a bunch of collisions, and they'll, they'll carry those vibrations through. But for now, good enough to say heat will flow from warm to cool. And so it'll look like this. I'll get heat that flows from the warm object to the cool object. So again, you can take an ice cube and put it in your hand, and you will feel heat flow. Now, what's interesting is what's really happening in that case. It feels like the ice cube is making your hand cold because, you know, we're like humans and we're, we are somewhat self-centered, or at least, you know, you focus on what you can feel and sense, and what you can feel and sense is cold from the ice cube so you imagine probably the ice cube like putting coldness on your hand but what's really happening is your hand is giving heat to the ice cube so you are generously donating some of your internal energy to transfer heat to the ice cube and you'll cause it to melt and then if you you know are feeling bored and you just want to watch an ice cube melt on your hand and you eventually will melt all the ice, and then you'll heat up the icy cold water. All of that will transfer uh, from you to the ice cube. But heat goes one way. Heat transfers from hot to cold. We call this a temperature gradient, when there's a difference in temperature between two points uh, in space, really, but basically between two objects. Heat will flow, and it will happen until you reach thermal equilibrium. So until the two temperatures are the same. So think equilibrium the same, thermal equilibrium means until they reach the same temperature. So this heat will continue to flow until they're the same temperature. And if they're in contact at the same temperature, then no heat will flow. So the warm object will cool down, the cool object will heat up, Eventually, they'll meet at some point, maybe in the middle, maybe not. It depends on what the objects are and how big they are and lots of other stuff that we'll look at. But eventually, they'll hit the same temperature, and at that point, heat stops flowing. There's no more transfer of energy. The energy that gets transferred then can do one of two things because it will become internal energy in object B, say. And we looked at there's two types, two ways you can have internal energy one is you can have kinetic energy, and that has to do with your temperature. The other is the particles can have potential energy that has to do with the phase. So heat will either change temperature or change phase. It'll only ever do one at a time, though. So with the ice cube example, you would melt all of the ice before any of it heated up. So all the melted ice would still be 0 Celsius or 32 Fahrenheit. That would be how cold the water is and until all the ice was melted you wouldn't heat up any water and then you would heat up the water so only one of these things happens at a time all right and those are the basics of those kind of terms that we're going to be using a lot as we go into this unit so to practice here are a couple real paper one questions that we can look at and make sure we're pretty much understanding those definitions so i have three of them what we'll do is We'll look at them together. 
and I will encourage you to pause the video, give it a shot, and then I'll talk you through the answer. All right, so here's the first one. Two bodies are in contact. The direction of thermal energy transfer depends on there. So go ahead, give it a pause. See if you uh, are paying attention and can put together what this is. All right, and of course, the answer is temperature. Uh, hopefully you were paying attention because we just said that a moment ago, but there you go. That's a paper one question. So it's just a definition of how does thermal energy transfer happen? And it depends only on the temperature. It doesn't matter how big either thing is. Uh, it doesn't matter that one of those I drew blue and one of those I drew red. And specific heat capacity is something we will talk about soon, uh, which has to do with the transfer of energy, but the direction depends on the temperature. It will always flow from hot to cold. All right, number two, read it through, pause, give it a shot. And the correct answer is... C, nothing will happen, believe it or not. If you had a perfectly insulated container, um, if you had like the hydro flask of all hydro flasks and it really, really, really completely insulated it from the surroundings, if you put ice in freezing cold water, neither of those things would happen. The ice wouldn't melt and the water wouldn't freeze because they're at the same temperature. They're at thermal equilibrium. And so no heat will transfer from one to the other. Uh, zero degrees is the melting point of ice, which means you can be either water or ice at that temperature. All right, last one. Read it through, pause, give it a shot. And the answer is B. Uh, we're changing phase here. That's the key thing. We're going from a gas to a liquid. And so what we're changing is the phase. So that's the macroscopic property that's changing. And you want to remember, you can only change one of these things at a time, temperature and phase. So if we're changing phase, the temperature has to be the same. Just like in the last problem, when the ice is melting or when the water is freezing, that whole process happens at zero degrees and it stays at zero degrees until the phase changes like complete. So same deal here. As I'm going from gas to liquid, the temperature cannot change so the kinetic energy has to stay the same because that's a measure of the temperature. So it's got to be B or D so we can narrow it down to those. And then you want to remember, as I go from gas to liquid, basically gas has the most potential energy, solid has the least because the molecules are very close together in a solid, very far apart in a gas. So I'm going to a closer together molecules, which means I'm decreasing the potential energy. So there you go, there are some paper one problems. If you can wrap your head around those, you are in good shape for the uh, start of this unit. We will soon get into some math in terms of how much heat transfers and all that good stuff. All right, but there you go. We will continue on as we make our way through the unit. Have fun.